Welcome to video 3. This video will explain post-processing in CADWIND. Post-processing is the process CADWIND uses to calculate the winding machine movements needed to manufacture your part, and how it stores those movements in a computer file called the part program. CADWIND has a unique way of defining the part program format so that it can be made compatible with virtually any machine controller. In this way, CADWIND has been successfully set up to create part programs for hundreds of different controllers all around the world. This video will show you how a part program works and how CADWIND can be set up to work with your particular machine controller. The first step is to define the machine parameters. These parameters tell CADWIND about your particular machine. The machine reference positions, the number of axes of motion available, the range of movement for each axis, the maximum velocities and accelerations. Usually these parameters need to be entered only once and is generally done when CADWIND is first installed. The reference tab answers the question, where is the machine delivery head when the controller says the axis is at its zero position? The easiest way to determine this is simply to move your machine to the zero positions and measure the positions. This is straightforward and the user manual that comes free with CADWIND has all the information you need to do this or if you prefer, Material can send an engineer to do this for you. The information in the Dimensions tab tells CADWIND the range of motion possible for your particular machine, one axis at a time. This information should be supplied to you by the machine manufacturer in the operating manual. Or you can simply move each axis from its minimum to its maximum positions and take note of these positions. In the Velocities tab, you can set the maximum velocities for each axis. CADWIND will move the machine as fast as possible, but will make sure that it does not exceed these velocity limits. For example, if the machine maximum carriage speed is 0.8 meters per second, we'll enter it here. Accelerations are the maximum changes in velocity allowed from one line or block in the part program to the next. The physical accelerations are set by the machine control software, not CADWIND. The numbers entered here will affect the speed and smoothness of the part program. The user's manual will give you some suggestions for how to set these parameters, or you can experiment with them yourself to get the best machine motion for your particular machine and your windings. The minimum processing time sets the minimum time that CADWIND will allow for your controller to process one line or block of the part program. If this is set too high and your part program contains a lot of short, fast movements, then CADWIND will slow down the part program to avoid feeding the controller information faster than it can be processed. Modern machine controllers can process the program very quickly, so if you have a new machine, you should set this value very low to avoid unnecessary slowing of the winding. For example, I will set it to 0.001 seconds. The Resolutions tab will set the number of increments required for your controller to make 1 mm or 1 inch or 1 revolution of motion for each particular axis. If your controller is set up to use millimeters and CADWIND is also set up to use millimeters, then the resolution will be 1. Similarly, 360 increments per revolution would be used for most controllers that are set up to use degrees for their rotating axes. You can also use negative resolutions to reverse the direction of an axis if it's going the wrong way. In the Axes tab, you simply need to tell CADWIND which axis of motion your machine has. The Format tab is where you can set up the format of the part program file so that your controller can read it. This information is stored in the definition file and can be edited directly right here. CAD1 comes with several definition files already set up for the most common controllers. Of course, you can edit these yourself to optimize them for your machine controller, or you can write your own. The CAD1 user's manual, which is supplied free with every CAD1 license, has detailed information on how to do this. Alternately, Material can organize a filament winding engineer to visit your facility and set up CAD1 to perform at its best with your particular machine and controller. Now that the machine parameters are entered, the part program format is stored in a definition file and the winding is shown on the mandrel, we are ready to enter the post-processing parameters and make the part program. This is done by clicking on the post-processing menu, then parameters. 
In the post processing parameters window, we have options for how to move the machine to achieve the desired winding and how fast to move the machine. The calculation mode determines the way that the machine's payout head will move to achieve the winding shown on the screen. There are four options. If we choose open enveloping cylinder, CADWIND will move the carriage backwards and forwards, but it will not move the cross carriage axis. This is good for two axis winding of pipes and tubes, but not usually the best option for four axis winding of vessels with domes, elbows, T's, or other more complicated shapes. This is the simulation of the machine motion. You can see that the carriage axis is being moved by the machine backwards and forwards, but there is no cross carriage motion. The closed enveloping cylinder calculation mode will move the cross carriage in and out, but only after the carriage axis has reached the end of its motion. The two axes are not moved at the same time. Let me demonstrate. You can see the carriage axis comes to a stop before the cross carriage begins to move in and around the dome of this mandrel. Similarly, the cross carriage will stop before the carriage begins to move after finishing the winding of the dome. This works okay for winding mandrels with closed ends, but there is a better option. The enveloping contour calculation mode will move all axes simultaneously and usually gives the fastest and smoothest part programs for 4, 5 and 6, 8 axis machines. You can see the payout head of the machine is following a smoother curve than for the other calculation modes, which usually gives the shortest winding time and the smoothest machine motion. The other option is to keep a constant free fiber length. The free fibre length is the distance the fibre travels unsupported from the head of the machine to the point where it first touches the mandrel surface. Keeping this distance constant is good for winding certain shapes, such as T mandrels, but can lead to some strange movements when used for vessels. There are two options for the part program which is created by CADWIND, CCDF and part program. If you choose CCDF, then the part program will create it in CADWIND's native format, which will not be suitable for a winding machine controller. If you choose part program, then the part program will be created in the format as defined in the definition file that we saw earlier in the machine parameters. If you want to make a part program to be used by your winding machine, then you should choose part program. However, if you want to look in detail at the way the machine moves, then CADWIND can make graphs of the machine motions using the CCDF or CADWIND control data format file. CCDF files are also good for collaboration with other people or other companies who use CADWIND but use a different winding machine and do not share your exact machine parameters or definition file. For example, you could make a CCDF, email to somebody else with CADWIND, and she or he could create a part program for their machine using the CCDF file you created even without any knowledge of their machine parameters or part program format. I will create a part program in the CCDF format so that we can see CADWINE's graphing capabilities. The part program will be created when you click Control Data. To open the graphing window, click Post Processing menu, then Display. You should then choose the part program file that you want to graph, then click Open. A series of graphs should appear on the screen. There is one graph for each of the machine's axes that you have chosen to include in the part program. You can turn individual machine axis graphs on or off by checking or unchecking the boxes on the left hand side of the window. Note that the vertical graph axis is in percent by default. This can be in percent of the maximum program values or in percent of the machine's maximum values. If we select all the machine axes but one, you will notice that it changes the units on the vertical graph axis into millimeters, inches or degrees, depending on the axis selected and whether metric or in English units have been used. 
You can zoom in by drawing a box from left to right by clicking the left mouse button and dragging like this. This is great for looking in depth at a particular machine movement that might be concerning you. For example, a jerking motion would appear as a sharp point on the graph. You can zoom back out to the default view by drawing a box from right to left, also by clicking and dragging with the left mouse button. By default, the positions of each machine axis are displayed. The machine velocities can be graphed instead, or the machine accelerations. Note that the meaning of acceleration in CADWIND is the difference in velocity between one line in the pipe program and the next. The graphing feature is great for analyzing programs for smoothness before going to the winding machine. You can easily check the program for collision avoidance as well while you are here if you know the diameter of the shaft supporting the mandrel. Simply check the cross carriage positions and make sure they don't collide. That brings us to the end of this tutorial video. In summary, we looked briefly at setting up the machine parameters for a particular winding machine, creating the part program and post-processing parameters, and graphing the machine movements using the post-processing display feature. Thank you very much.